In today's video, I'll be catching every single Pokemon in Pobamon. However, Pobamon doesn't actually have that many Pokemon. Unless you're playing on the Cobblemon Island server. This server has its own custom Pokemon modelers ahead of the actual Cobblemon devs in numbers of Pokemon. They've added Pokemon like Tyranitar, Metagross, a whole bunch of new Generation 9 Pokemon, including the legendary Pokemon in Maridon and also Poridon. My goals for this video are to get a full team of level 100 Pokemon, catch a legendary Pokemon, and finally, defeat the owner of the server. If you guys want to join the server, I'll leave the links to the Discord and the IP address in the description. Now, let's complete the Pokedex. When you first spawn in, you're greeted by this little mini guy who sort of looks like me with a mask on, which looks really cool. After this though, I headed straight over to the crate area as I wanted to see what was there. And I saw that there are currently four different types of crates. That being the plushy crate, the voting crate, the poker crate, and finally, the event crates. These are all unique, and my personal favorite out of these is the poker crates. You might be wondering why. Well, these are actually found in the wild. As well, in the voting crates, you can also get shinies, but it's less of a chance, and you're only limited to eight a day, whereas poker crates, you can find an endless amount. Also, I got a free Dragonite plushie for logging in for the first time, as well as a Pikachu couch. I then went ahead and claimed my daily reward, as well as my streak reward, as if you log in every day for seven days consistently, you can get some awesome rewards from this. I'm still yet to choose my star Pokemon, but I think I'm gonna go for Froakie, as Greninja is made for the coolest design star Pokemon. Not to mention, even though it wasn't available when I played on the server, they are looking to add Ash Greninja to the game. Also now, even more Pokemon give shoulder pet Pokemon effects, like Froakie giving me water breathing. But it's enough of Froakie for now. I'm going to level him all the way up to level 20 of these rare candies. And doing that, I think you know what it means. I can now evolve my Froakie up into a Frogadier which not only gets me one step closer to Greninja, but also one step closer to completing the Pokedex. Now, I got a few vote crate keys, and you can do this by just voting for the server by doing slash vote, and it will give you loads of options. I got some okay rewards, like a barrel for the mass balls, which is a really cool item and really cool decoration. I also got a few Pokeballs, like some Dream Balls and some Quick Balls, which is really good. Not to mention, every time you vote, you get a few emeralds, which means when you find a village, you can go trade these. They also have their own custom shop where you can buy even more Pokeballs, you can buy armor, you can even buy the custom furniture. Now, one of the coolest features is Slash Gliders, and by doing this, you can see that there's gliders. These are a bit like Elytras, but look so much cooler, and automatically, you always get the Pikachu Glider. But there's always more available by heading onto the shop and as you can see there's a mega lucario bundle and you get all this stuff including a mega lucario glider and also a mega lucario glider shiny which is so cool now it's time for us to head out into the world and when you teleport to the world straight away you are on your glider and you teleport like this this is amazing as it means you can scout out the area before you even land and you look awesome while doing it. Now, I wasn't too sure where I wanted to land or what I was actually looking for. All I know is I wanted to find some new Pokemon. With the landing in this biome though, I found a Ghastly and I decided to get my first win with Frogadier against it. As I know later, there'll be loads more Ghastlies to find. I also beat this Galarian Linoon, and some of these Pokemon are already level 20s, which is really scary, but Frogadier now is level 22. I then found this Luxray, which I was like, okay, right, let's try and capture this thing, but it broke out pretty quick, and then it started to attack me. I didn't know what was going on, but this is a new feature, that Pokemon will come down, chase you, and attack you if they are aggressive, like this Luxray. I was absolutely terrified of this thing. Now, even though I kept running away, I could have just thrown a Pokeball at it and it would have stopped. But, yeah, I was being a bit silly at this point, I guess. So, I ended up throwing the Pokeball at it and it actually worked. And I didn't quite catch it this time, but I ended up catching a little Nackley, which is my first Pokemon captured. And I actually do end up capturing this Luxray, but not in an Ultra Ball. I end up capturing it in a Great Ball. It broke out this time, I threw the Great Ball and I was able to capture it. 
But not only while I was fighting this Luxray, there was also a Nido Queen over in the distance, which I wanted to get. But unfortunately, it despawned by the time I had a chance to go and get it. But now with this Luxray, it looks so cool and it's going to help me in so many battles. I then thought, you know what? Onyx, pretty big Pokemon. Let's capture it now because then it's off the list and we know we don't have to worry about capturing an Onyx later on when we need to evolve it to a Steelix. Oh no, it's time to stop me. Run, run away, run away. Okay, right. That was a bit scary, but let's go capture this Gyarados. And Gyarados actually change colors depending on the biome you're in. So because we're in a jungle biome, this is a green Gyarados. And I was able to capture the Gyarados pretty easily. I headed back to spawn and checked out the poker hunts as each one would give a different reward depending on the level you did. So if I did an easy hunt, it was going to give me a little reward, maybe like a few XP candies. But if I did an extreme one, I would get some mega rewards. My first one was a Taurus in a heavy ball, which I thought was a bit difficult to start off with, but we might come back to it. I then end up teleporting back out and doing a new RTP and I still just cannot get over these gliders. Just starting in the air like this is amazing. Because what you can do as well is F3, check the area you're in, and then fly to a new one if you're high enough up, which I was here. But I wanted to check out some of the new biomes. And the biome I was actually landing in was Yellowstone. And in this Yellowstone biome, I could actually get the legendary Pokemon Maridon here. So if I waited around enough, maybe I was able to capture a Maridon. I might have to come back here. But while here, I may have found the most aggressive Pokemon in the game. That being weird here, it attacks you no matter what. You could be 50 blocks away and it would hunt you down. This weirdo though, I end up actually capturing it and adding it to the Pokedex, but not to my team just yet. I also end up finding a Swablu as I wanted to try out an Altaria in this game, as I've never really used an Altaria before. I then end up catching myself a Gimme Goal, as we need to find out how to actually evolve Gimme Goal in this game to its evolution, Goldengo. As normally you have to capture enough Gimme Ghouls to get the Gimme Ghoul coins, so we'll have to find out how they do it in this game. I did end up finding this Pokemon Center, but unfortunately there was no chest in it to get a loot crate, but there was a PC and I ended up stealing the PC so I could access my team whenever I wanted to and change it out where I wanted to. I finished off the days though by actually capturing an Eevee in this village and I forgot to actually check the village for any chests, so I might have missed out on some really good loot in here. But finally, after capturing the Eevee, I was able to go ahead and capture a Garvantula as well. An awesome feature every server has is the fact that it has warps, like spawn warp and everything. But this server has certain player warps, so players have the option to actually make a warp for every other player to access. This place is called Bliss Town, and they sell you certain items, they have PCs ready to go, and they have everything you'll actually ever need. I ended up buying quite a few Pokeballs, and they also have an area where you can buy plushy crates and everything like that. It's so cool. I then got a surprise visit from the server owner. This was a shock, and he gave this item. And this is an exclusive item called the Tinkerton Hammer. Now this item clears out mass area when you use it. And this item they're making available in crates very soon. The server owner actually let me keep this item for this 100 days as he wanted me to be able to get as much resources as I can to help me get the best team to try to defeat him. And I will defeat you Diablo. I finished these days by capturing up some more Pokemon like Orbeetle. I then went to one of the new areas called Goomtown, another player walk. And this walk was so cool as well with a custom Pokemon center and places to buy loads of evolution items, which is great. I also found a village where I wanted to find some poker crate keys, but unfortunately, I couldn't find any in here. But this trip wasn't a total waste. As it was an RTP, there were loads of different Pokemon hanging around. So I ended up catching myself a Tinkerton. Of course I get this as soon as I get the Tinkerton Hammer. I also found an Eevee, Dwebble, Sandshrew, Durant, loads of different Pokemon, which was amazing. And I, of course, captured as many as I could because the end goal is to complete the Pokedex, which we have to do. I then found another town this time in a snow biome from an RTP. And once again, I couldn't find any Poker Crate keys until I looked in this chest which had so much stuff. You can get a salt vest. And like I said, 
all these chests are custom to each player. So it doesn't matter if someone else gets the chest first, it will stay custom to you. So I open up my first big crate key, got some quick balls, which I'll never be too angry about. And after I open up my second one, I end up getting 32 more quick balls after that, which is amazing. Another stack of quick balls, which will help me capture as many Pokemon as possible. But as you can see, I could have got a Master Ball, some Poke Builder coins, a training bundle, loads of different things. Right, challenge time. If you guys are still here, you have till I land to subscribe to our channel and tell me in the comments what's your favorite legendary Pokemon. You haven't got long. I'm coming down quick on this glider. You got about five, four, three, two, one. Better decide quick. Down. Right, let me know what your favorite legendary was and I better see you subscribed. I went back to my main objective for a bit and ended up capturing this Basca and it was a white strap one which meant I could evolve it into a Basca Legion later on. After capturing the Basca then though, I decided to check out my PC and I wanted to change my team up a little bit as some of these Pokemon I knew I didn't want on the end. So I ended up bringing in a Swablu. As like I said earlier, I really want to use an Altaria while playing Cobblemon. I also added in Rolt, Tinkatink, and a few other Pokemon here and there, just try and level them up and try and put as much of the decks as possible. After this, I realized I actually found a glitch, as with the Tinkerton Hammer, if you break a PC, you get two back, as there's two blocks of it. I end up reporting this, though, as we don't want this glitch in the game. I then went and got a Corva Squire, Obstacle, and also a Pelipper. And then I found this random loot on the floor, and this loot actually gave me a large XP candy. So I end up going to heal Frogadier up, and while capturing Saryu, I used it on Frogadier, and this XP candy got him four levels, which meant I'm only three levels away from getting Greninja. I then can believe when I found a wild Wailord, and after capturing it, another one had spawned just in the distance. That's so insane to see the biggest Pokemon in the wild like that. I then found this Pokemon Center on this hill, and it looked amazing. And even though there was no Poker Creek keys in here, there were some great hold items like leftovers and also there was a galarian cuff and also a magmarizer which is great for the evolutions that i'll need later on after i got these two i end up capturing this viking ball which is insane to find in the wild it's great to see such a wide variety of pokemon and as you can see on the pokedex every pokemon with a model is in the game that means there's over 500 pokemon in this game and even if they do have a substitute, they might still be in the game, they just don't have a model designed for them. Cobblemon Island is great at getting so many models out and producing them fast as well. And they even have the legendary Pokemon, as you can see, Maridon, Anchoridon, and even some Paradox Pokemon. I then I'm find another chest and I actually got a medium XP candy where I was able to give it to Frogadier and now he's two levels away from Greninja. And then I end up finding loads of Pokemon in the Ice Ram that I have never caught before. Ice Q, Bergmite, and also a Dugong. I did end up catching all of these after loads and loads of Dust Balls. I then also caught this Shelder and a few other Pokemon like Celio, Tentacle, just loads of water type Pokemon that spawn in the ice. I then found a treasure map, and you guys know what that means. I have to go hunting for this treasure. But I actually almost died, so if I didn't slash spawn there, I was finished and I wouldn't be able to get back there. But I actually had a few XP candies. So I gave all these to Frogadier and there was only a few left to get. So I gave them all to Frogadier to get to level 39, which meant I can now get Greninja. Wait, what? That's not Greninja. Okay, there we go. Fine. We're fine, guys. No worries. Right. Let's go back there and let's find this treasure. And I was really hoping this treasure, maybe I could get a poke crit key, or maybe even something better, like an event crit key, as they are possible to find. I actually ended up capturing this ditto on the way to finding it. As I got closer and closer, we end up finding the treasure, and once again, it's all player based, so it doesn't matter if someone else finds it, you still get it. And I got three large XP candies, so no crit keys unfortunately, but I ended up giving these, all these to Swablu, and that meant I was one level away from an Altaria. Just look at this as well. I'm finding Pokemon like Avalanche here in the wild. Final evolution Pokemon. That is just ridiculous. And at the start of day 20 to 21, I end up finding a yellow sun biome. And yes, the first legendary Pokemon I have spawned is a Maridon. I couldn't believe it. I was just here searching for new Pokemon. I had no idea that a legendary was going to spawn over here. 
I was in no way prepared for this at all. My team were low level. I think the highest level I had was my Luxray at 35 or maybe my Greninja, I think it was maybe 40 or something. I was having to use my Nackley at level 18 to damage a level 70 Pokemon. That was the only thing that could actually hurt it. I was in no way prepared for this legendary battle. However, I had to get a master from somewhere and there were conversations going on in the chat between me and other players so that I could potentially buy a Master Ball from them. And if I could be able to buy the Master Ball, this Moridon I could capture. But I didn't think it was actually going to happen. I thought this was over and I would lose the Moridon. But luckily, I was actually able to buy a Master Ball. And I got into battle with it, with my Wailer that I grabbed from the PC. And I threw the Master Ball at the Moridon. And I was able to capture it. This was my first legendary Pokemon on the server. And I'm going to make sure this is my first Pokemon to level 100. And with that, our first objective is complete to catch a legendary Pokemon. Let's go. And of course, I had to go to one of the towns to show it off to everyone and show them how cool this design is and just how massive Moridon looks. Other people were showing off the legendaries and the owner even visited to see. And Diablo, I'm going to defeat you with it. I still couldn't go away from my main goal, which is to complete the Pokedex, so I was still focusing on capturing loads of Pokemon. But while finding this abandoned Pokemon, I was actually able to get leftovers and also a Thunderstone, which meant I could get even more Pokemon evolved and get the Pokedex completed. As you saw as well, I got two lucky eggs, which is insane for leveling up legendary Pokemon and also pseudo legendaries. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Make sure you go and subscribe. Now, I was still searching for new biomes as none of these biomes I've really explored before on this server. So I had to keep exploring and every time I explored a biome, there was something new. Like there was just a random Alolan Executor chilling around on this beach. Why? I don't know. I guess because Hawaii and everything would make sense. I then ended up finding this village which looked insane. It had a castle and everything and I thought, wow, these villages are massive. And each of them has its own unique design, which I absolutely love about it. I was also here capturing a few Pokemon like Scavillan and loads of different other ones which you haven't caught before as we need that Pokedex complete as there are probably over 500 Pokemon in Cobblemon Islands. I ended up actually finding a place that I thought was a really cool area to build a base in. And that's just what I wanted to do here was I wanted this to be my home base so that I knew this would be where all our stuff goes down to. If we ever need to TP back to somewhere that's not spawn, we can come here. I then did a Wonder Shade and actually got an Aegislash, which is insane. And I'm definitely adding this to my team. In this village I found as well, you see, I got a Poker Crate key, which is just incredible. I also got a Blossom and also a Psyduck while here. But now I need to go open this Poker Crate key. And there are so many different things that I could get here. I could get some cool cosmetics or even five more poker crate keys so I can get some more items. But I'm not going to be mad with some money as I can spend this on the GTS to buy some Pokemon or even buy some blocks for the building. I end up clearing out this massive area. I also found a level 57 Ludicolo. And if I were to add this to my team, it would be my highest level Pokemon with the exception of Moridon. I then decided to place down some Apricorn trees as I need to start crafting my own Pokeballs and not just rely on the ones that I get in the crates. And as you see as well, in the voting crates, I actually got some tables and stuff, but I got five more Poker Crate keys and also 16 rare candies. These voting crates are actually insane. You know, it's worth doing your votes and voting for the server. I then got 1,200 more claim blocks, which is insane, which means I can actually expand where my house is going to be. And I did just that. The next thing I did was I decided to fish for a little bit, as fishing is a little bit different in this game, as you can level up your fishing skill, but also your poker fishing skill. And at the low levels, it's quite rare to find something like a Lapras. However, the more you level up your fishing, the higher percentage you have of getting a legendary. And the rarity changes. So I want to level up my fishing as much as I can. So I could potentially get something like a Suicune or even a Walking Wake, which would be incredible. This is on my first fish here. I got a Poliwag, which is one of the rarer catches for the level I was at. I then end up wanting to get a Gallade, but I mistakenly didn't see 
that my Curlia was actually female, which meant it had to be a Gardevoir. But I'm not going to complain looking at this design. There was also an issue with the server where it went down for a little bit, and the server owner actually rewarded everyone with a poker crate key. And different things like this happen, as if there's any faults on the server, they then reward the player to make up for it, which is incredible. Unfortunately, I only got some dive balls, which might be the worst thing in the poker crate. I'm not going to show every time I'm fishing, but just so you guys know, I am fishing throughout these days at points so I can up my fishing skill as there might be something later for an event where I need my fishing up. And as you see here on the side, I can see my fishing level. This is my poker fishing level. My overall fishing level will change and I need to get that well up so that I can get a better chance of getting a legendary Pokemon. I decided now was a good time though to start building my house as I needed a proper base of operations. So that's just what I did. However, I actually didn't know what sort of base I wanted to build, if it wanted to be a proper house or just a little hut or something. I just sort of went with the flow and decided on what I was going to do at the time. And I just wanted to use different blocks and go with something that stands out to everyone and be like, I know whose house that is. Nothing generic. So that's just what I did. I ended up building sort of a base house area and then would build from that. But I couldn't just do that. I wanted to use some of the cool cosmetics that they've added into the game and some of the building items that they've got here. So some of the custom tables. This executor lamp looks absolutely insane. And I've definitely got to have two of these down. And then there were the custom te tematic. Is it tematic? Tematic table, I guess. Sure. And then obviously I've got to put my Dragonite plushie that I got at the start. I also got to have some glass. I've got to be able to set my windows and get some light into my house. But then I realized these Apricot trees are actually in the way. So I end up destroying a few of them, but I will end up taking the rest of them down later on. I didn't really like the birch wood I had on the side there, and I will be getting rid of that. First, I need to go back out exploring as I need to level my team up to level 100, but also continue to complete the Pokedex. These Ludicolos as well were everywhere for the time being, and I leveled off these so much. They were ranging from about level 30 to maybe level 60 at times. And my Marado now is level 75, and he takes these out easily with just one discharge. So I could use the switch training with the lucky eggs to level them up. I also ended up finding loads of other fully evolved Pokemon, like this Quagsite, and taking them out for XP. And there's level 42 Pidgeot. And I had to capture this thing. Because if you guys remember my first Cobble 100 days, Pidgeot killed my Sableye and I absolutely love Sableye. I then ended up capturing as well this level 41 Scyther. And Scyther is insane. Not only is that and Scizor one of my favourite Pokemon in the game, but also it knows false swipes. And that means I can get Pokemon down to 1 HP and makes them easier to capture. There are also loads of these Cricketune, which you see is level 52. I've never seen someone with a Cricketune so high level now you might have probably mentioned it earlier but there are events that go on and later on in these 100 days there is going to be a fishing event and in these fishing events they will have different rounds and the winner gets some absolutely insane rewards they can range from things like master balls to legendary pokemon anything and as you can see here there is a difference between poker fishing and normal fishing you see i have a 0.01 percent chance for a legendary or a mythical so I need to level up my fishing loads. I went to different biomes to see what different Pokemon I actually get, but not forgetting to level up my team because the fishing that I was doing, I wasn't getting the highest level Pokemon, so I had to go to the wild to find the level 40s. There are also these random loots in the wild as well. As you can see, there's an Ultra Ball loot, and it ranges from Pokeball to Ultra Ball, and the Ultra Ball loots give the best rewards. As you can see, I've got a large XP candy, which I threw on my Altara to get it to level 44, so I can learn things like Dragon Pulse and Moonblast. I continue to level off things like Ariados, just getting as much XP as I can, as I wanted to have a really high level team, and I need them all to be level 100. I then ended up finding this village, which was insane, and I ended up getting... Wait, what? Okay, Diablo. I ended up finding some more Pokemon here though. That is x -Bard. And I thought, wow, x -Bard. Third evolution Pokemon. This thing has got to be rare. Oh, come on. There's another entry right here. This is what I mean. It changes depending on the actual day and probably if you log in. There's going to be different Pokemon that actually pop up for you. So you've got to make sure you log in every day. And that's how you get your Pokedex completed so much. 
I've actually caught 72 Pokemon and that Pokedex number hasn't been updated for a while, they say. So there is actually more than 367 Pokemon here. That made me urgent to catch as many Pokemon as possible, as if I've only got 72 and we're on day 35 right now, I've got to rush it so much. I need to go out on a capturing spree and capture absolutely anything I haven't caught before. I need to not focus on leveling for a bit and I need to just capture as much Pokemon as I can. To see I'm catching Bouflaunts, Swellows, Pokemon you might have never seen before and Pokemon I've never seen before. We were just focused on capturing as many Pokemon as possible as that's what we needed to do. However, I couldn't catch these Pokemon outside of battle so I would have to waste a bit of time going into battle. But as you see there, I've gone up so many on this day 35 to 38. When I did find high level Pokemon that I had already captured, like Spasca Legion, I would take them out so I could get the levels to continue to get my team to level 100. And I'm still quite a way off, so we're going to need to buy some rare candies, some large XP candies, and we're going to have to complete some poker hunts to be able to get more of these. As you see, I found this level 55 weirder, and we were taking them out so that we could still continue to level our team. I end up finding this village, but with no prevail. Unfortunately, the village had no poker crate keys in it for us, but it was still cool to find this village. We then went back to building our house, and it was time to focus on what we needed to do. I ended up placing some more of the cool items they had and custom builds, and cleared out the rest of the Apcon trees. Like I said, I wanted to go with a house that was unique, and I didn't really know what to do with it. I didn't have enough money to actually finish building the roof, so I had to go back out and capture Pokemon and also defeat them. And as you see here, every time you defeat Pokemon, you get some money for it. So I need to go out and defeat Pokemon and capture them so I can earn money to buy blocks. I then found this awesome building, which is called a Professor's Laboratory, which is a broken down Professor's Laboratory. And this thing has ultra good loot. And look in this barrel. What? Two Pokerate keys and a link cable. That means any trade evolution Pokemon I can do by myself with that link cable. I also got an EXP share and I went over to open my Poker Crate keys. And would you know, I end up getting a training bundle, which is insane. Five more red candies, which means I can use them on my ride on. I always end up purchasing myself a Master Ball so that if I run into another legendary, I'm able to capture it. I end up getting more dive balls in the second crate though, which is really unfortunate. However, with that though, I had enough money now so I could finish the roof. And like I said, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew it was going to be unique and nothing anyone's ever seen before. I end up building out this little area and I was going to build up and build a pillar going over the top and it would create sort of like a dome. So I end up in the staircase up and everything. And then at a point, I was turning the staircase around so that it goes back on itself. And it might look a little bit weird right now. But when you guys see the finished product, I promise this thing will look insane. Replace this glass box down so we can see the whole way out. And as you can see here, this side that we're going to go from. We're going to do that on both sides and go up to meet a point. If you guys want to come see the base, these are the coordinates as well. I then went to start my first hunt, that being an easy hunt, for a bond suite. Now, I didn't know what the hunt rewards were like, but we'll come back to this a bit later on. I end up looking on the GTS and end up buying these Sableye goggles. Now, you might think, what do these Sableye goggles do? Well, to be honest, not a lot, but it's Sableye. And you guys know me, I have to love Sableye. And these cosmetics are amazing, and it makes your character look really cool. Now, what you do here to access them is you do slash cosmetics and then go to not your emote, but to your hats and you can see Sableye goggles, equip them and boom, I'm now wearing the Sableye goggles. And you have loads of different cosmetics like this. And they have just added something called ranked battles to the server and you can get different cosmetics like this, Giratina, Zapdos and even Arceus cosmetic to make yourself stylish in the server. And then I wanted to go to the end to find some more Pokemon like the unknowns and see what Pokemon I could actually capture here. As I know the end is filled with psychic type Pokemon. And I can believe it, whilst we're in the end, a legendary Lunala spawned in the end. This had to be on me. I was searching around frantically for this thing and I couldn't believe it when I actually saw the Lunala. Only a few days after buying a mask, we just in case we find another legendary. And Lunala looked insane. 
This design might be one of my favorites. But I couldn't actually find where the R to battle it was. So I ended up running away from this thing because I thought it was going to beat me and try and kill me. But luckily, I found out where it was and I tried to throw the mask at it, but I couldn't find its hit point. And without finding this hit point, I might lose the mask because the mask might either break or I could just lose it through an item wipe. Luckily, after about five throws, though, I actually end up finding the hit point of the Lunala and was able to capture it and capturing the Lunala. I think you guys know what that means. We are going to have to go to spawn to show it off to everyone. And once again, the server on a Diablo pops by to have a look while even wearing the Lunala cosmetic. That's right. We now have two legendary Pokemon on our team. Let's go. It came to that part of the day as well for me where I was actually able to wonder trade a Pokemon away. And in this wonder trade, I couldn't believe it. I actually got a bag on. What is my luck right now? Salamence is my favorite pseudo legendary Pokemon. And the fact that I've just got a bag on is insane. I put the lucky egg on him, switch trained him on a level 43 Durant. And look at the levels he gets. Off this one Durant, he went up from level 8 to level 22. That means he's almost at Shellgon already, which is insane. I then ended up finding this broken Pokemon Center down. And the first chest I found wasn't too good, to be honest. But what happened next was really crazy. I ended up finding down this one hole, and it was into a mob spawner. I ended up dying and going back to spawn. However, I ended up just doing a slash back, so go back to the area. And this might be the luckiest fool in the world. I fell down and I got a few time boards, which isn't anything special. But in this crate, look at that, a poker crate key. That might be the luckiest fool in the history. And would you know, from the poker crate key, what do I get? I end up getting not only something good, but something amazing for me. That being a Pokemon training bundle, which means more rare candies, and that's insane. I then had a present waiting for me back at home, and this chest was filled with loads of furniture for me, which meant I could decorate my house loads, which is great for me. I ended up clearing up inventory quite heavily, and I went ahead and straight to used loads of the furniture I got. I built a mini setup, so I had a chair, a desk, placed these pictures down, had my slippers on the floor. I even built a mini bedroom upstairs. I also had these lampposts down, and my house now was looking unique, and it was standing out. I then went out to find my Pokemon, which was this Bond Suite. And after quite a few attempts at trying to capture it in this Safari Ball, I was able to capture it. But it did take a long, long, long time to capture it. But I ended up getting five Poker Builder tokens, which is insane. Because of those, I can change the EVs, IVs of Pokemon, also the natures. I can change my Pokemon to make them stronger and better for the final battle. I continued to level, and after being this Tangrowth, my Bagon was finally able to evolve into a Shellgon. And with it now at level 31, that meant we are only 29 levels away from having ourselves a Salamence, and I cannot wait to see the Salamence design. The next thing that happened is I ended up finding this village, and in this village, it would be a very lucky village. So I didn't find just one Poker Crate Key. No, no, no. I ended up finding three Pokecrate keys, but also able to capture some new Pokemon like Bronzor I've never seen before. There's a second Pokecrate key, and finally, the third Pokecrate key, all found in this village. And I didn't have the best of luck in my Pokecrate keys, to be honest, until the last one, let's say. Because in this first one, I'm only joking, obviously. I always have luck right now, it seems. And in this first one, I end up getting a Pokemon training bundle. In the second one, I got some Shulker shells. But then in this last one, I end up getting a power band, which means that I can actually now EV train my Pokemon in defense if I wanted to. But I had my Vote Crate keys left to finish off. And I end up getting five Poke Crate keys from my Vote Crates. It is 100% worth voting on the server. Because you never know what you're going to get, whether it's going to be a Pokemon, Everstone, or five Poker Crate keys. I ended up getting 50 Poker Builder tokens as well, which is incredible. And in this last opening, I ended up getting about 20,000 Pokemon, which meant I had 34,000 Poker Dollars. 
The owner then came and visited me and gave me a new item that's being added to the poker crates, which is a backpack, which is a double chest that you can carry around and put your items in, which is incredible. And I'm 100% going to use this to carry around my Pokeballs. I went back to leveling and capturing Pokemon that I hadn't seen before to up the Pokedex numbers. I caught a Cacturn. I then caught this Dedenne, which look how cute this Dedenne is. I didn't think it'd be that small. But if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you do subscribe as it really helps me out. And if we grow this channel loads, I might even do a giveaway on this server. And the higher level my Pokemon start to get now as well, I find higher level Pokemon and new Pokemon like that. So I found this level 43 Wigglytuff. So if I keep leveling my team, I'm going to find more fully evolved Pokemon, even like this Mamoswine. So it is now urgent that we level up our team to their final stages so we can find more Pokemon like Mamoswine and Wigglytuff. We then end up finding another village where I get two more Pokerate keys from it. And in these Pokerate keys, I end up getting some more dive balls, which I'm really fed up of seeing right now. But in the other one, I end up getting a free Pokemon. And I had to go see what this Pokemon was, because if it's something new, it might be able to help us out in the Pokedex. And would you know, it was a Chansey, a new Pokemon, which is one more added to the Pokedex. We are well over 100 Pokemon now and on our way to 200. I then end up doing another Wonder Trade and we get a Hitmontop, another new Pokemon, which I definitely wasn't going to see in the wild. And look how cool Hitmontop was. I wish it was spinning on his head, though. That would be an insane animation. I then end up going on an absolute spree of evolutions. So I evolved my Flaffy into an Ampharos. I then evolved my Abracadabra and then used a Link Cable to get an Alakazam. I then evolved Eevee to Jolteon, Shroomish to Breloom. I end up getting a Mightyana, Sandslash, Yanmega, Nidorina. I end up evolving my Caterpie into a Metapod, Marrow to Zoomeril. I end up doing so many. I lost count. I evolved my Stealthful to Beware, Oddish to Gloom. And finally, I got my Shell Gun to level 50, which meant Salamance. And this design, I love it. 100% my favorite design I've seen so far. Better than Lunala, better than Maridon. I just love Salamance so much. I then continued to work on my house and wanted to go an entire glass dome over the top. But while doing so, I found a Larvitar running around in my house. This is what I mean. I ended up putting him on my shoulder after capturing him, and I knew this was going to be another Pokemon in my final team. I put the EXP share on Larvitar, so when I went to level him up, I would be able to get in as high a level as possible so I could get my Tyranitar very, very soon. I ended up heading to Blisstown after this, and I couldn't believe it. When at Blisstown, a wild Noivan had spawned at level 61. This thing, I had to capture it, 100%. I do end up capturing, and that's insane for the Pokedex, so I've not even seen a Noibat yet. Insane capture. I then finally leveled up my Lavatar so I could actually get it to a Pupitar, and now all we need is to get it to a Tyranitar, and then it will be a solid member to our team. We continue to level, though, off a of Pokemon like Pelipper, and even after finding this new village, we weren't actually able to get any Pokecrate keys. But while here, we made some Moonballs, as I had a hunt for a Baneri, and I needed to capture it in a Moonball. As these Poke Hunts, you need specific Pokeballs to capture them in. So with this Baneri, I end up capturing it in a Moonball, and these easy hunts at this point, they weren't giving me what I needed to. I needed bigger rewards. 2,000 Poke Coins isn't enough. We need to go for one of the extreme hunts, or one of the hard hunts, to see what the rewards are like on them. I decided to continue working on my house, and I knew there was something missing on this middle layer, and I decided to build the prismary fence all around it, as I just wanted to use as many different blocks as I could. And I thought this actually looked pretty cool, and it gave a bit more brightness to it, and it gave a bit of an archway, and I was really happy with how this was starting to look, and this house was really starting to take shape. I then saw a boulder in the distance, and I thought I haven't caught one yet, but in the corner of my eye, I also spotted that there was a Beldum just chilling over here. With this Beldum, this meant I would not only have a Tyranitar, Salamance, but also a Metagross. 
three of the strongest pseudo legendary Pokemon in the game. I had to go level this thing. There was no way I couldn't get this thing into a Metagross and use it on my team. Can I also just say that these easy hunts, 50 claim blocks, that's not enough for me now. I can only go for the extreme ones. They are way too easy at this point. If we're looking at it as well, our Pokedex, we are now at 165. We're not even halfway there yet. We need to step our game up on this Pokedex catching. But I can't find any new Pokemon anymore. It's getting really difficult to actually find them. But I end up going to spawn after getting two Pokedex keys from this village. And in the Pokedex keys, I basically just end up getting a load more money, which I'm not going to complain about. Getting 10,000 Poké Dollars and then 5,000 Poké Dollars isn't the worst thing to get as it means I can purchase Pokémon off the GTS but also blocks to help me build my house. So I'm not going to complain at getting money from my Poké Crates. And can I just say, look at the scenery of this place. To have the scenery and play this is insane. And when I can find Pokémon like Scolopede in the wild as well to capture, that is incredible. To go to the scenery and same Pokémon like Scolopede, amazing. I ended up getting really close to my Metang being able to evolve into a Metagross and I continued and wanted to push and push and push as I wanted to get that level 100 Pokemon with my Maridon. And I actually found my first wild star Pokemon, that being a Poplio, so I definitely had to capture this thing. And with Poplio caught now, we have two star Pokemon, that being Greninja and Poplio. So we need to find a few more of them to be able to capture and complete this Pokedex. We wouldn't stop there though as we needed to keep beating Pokemon like the Weird Air, and my Maridon was getting super close to level 94. But when I saw that I actually had a playtime reward after capturing the Sneasel, my playtime reward of 12 hours, it gave me 10 rare candies, which meant my Maridon was the first of my Pokemon to reach level 100. That is one out of six. So we might have a Maridon at level 100, but we still need to get five more Pokemon to level 100. This is going to be a challenge. We need to work super hard to be able to complete this now. I was finally able to get my Matang to evolve into Metagross though, as it only is 45 to evolve and not 50 or 50 like, like some of the other pseudo legendary Pokemon. I end up finding another village where I got one more Poker Crate key and in this Poker Crate key I end up getting some more training bundles which is good for the rare candies as I would now start to use these on Lunala so I can level it up as well to level 100. And I thought one Pokerit key isn't enough. So I did some trades for Pokemon and I may have gone overboard. We now have 20 Pokerit keys to open. And I'm not going to show you all of these because otherwise we're just going to be sat here for ages looking at this Diapus. We don't need that. We've got some Shulker shells. We've got some training packs and stuff. We even got one of the swords. So there's a Pokeball sword which we actually ended up obtaining, which is insane. But there were so many Diveballs, I couldn't believe it. I kept getting Diveball after Diveball. But luckily, I also got some other balls like Quick Balls. I got quite a lot of money, training bundles and everything. Let's see here. I'm showing you the first half. So we got, like I said, loads of training bundles, not much money. But we got loads of Quick Balls and everything. I end up getting 50 Pokeball tokens as well which was insane. Overall, it was pretty good, but nothing special. No shiny legendaries, no shiny Pokemon at all, nothing. Speaking of legendaries, while fishing, I end up getting a Suicune. Um, that's not meant to happen. That's not part of the script. Luckily, I had purchased another mask with the amount of money I'd got from all those Pokecrate keys, and I was actually able to capture the Suicune. Somebody else thought it was on them, but no, this was my Suicune. That is now Lunala, Maridon, and Suicune as my legendaries, plus three pseudo legendaries. This team is looking insane. We had to go to spawn to show off, and the owner was shocked that I actually got this through fishing. This is why you have to level up your fishing, as it is insane. And you can get the legendary Pokemon like Suicune walking weight through your fishing. I end up getting 20 more rare candies through Poker Crate Geese and everything. And now we are one level away on the Lunala to being level 100. Right, now let's finish off the basis of our house. So we need loads of stairs, loads of glass so we can finish this all off. I'm close to putting it all the way up now. 
but I want to see how this looks from the outside. We had to place glass all over so that we could see the top of it and see the staircase. Some people are running up and down on it. We're able to see them. Okay, right. Let's go get a good perspective of this. Come on. I really hope this looks good. And oh my God, it's not even symmetrical. It's not symmetrical. You know what? That's fine. That makes it more unique to us. I then found this yellow Voltorb as well. And I know Voltorb shiny is blue. So if you guys know what this yellow Voltorb is about, let me know in the comments about it. Because I have no clue why it's yellow. Maybe it's an Ultra Ball Voltorb. I realized as well, I haven't actually explored the end in these 100 days. So that's just what I did. I went to the end and caught some new Pokemon here. As there was a Gengar and Sense Scorch after me. But luckily I was able to get into battle with one of them and they stopped attacking me. With this as well, this is two more Pokemon that we needed to add to the Pokedex. I ended up catching Coughings, Weezings, Haunters, everything in here, even like Hound Hours and stuff. I caught everything I could. Plus, the Gengars being level 50 or so was really good for XP. As you see there, 7,000 XP for Pupitar. And there's me catching a Hound Hour. Just anything I could find so that we could get our Pokedex even higher. And once again, do your vote crates. I got 16 rare candies from this. And with those 16 rare candies, that meant Lunala can now be level 100, meaning we have two level 100s. And I gave the other 15 to Suicune. So Suicune can go from level 50 all the way up to level 65, which is now insane. With two level 100s, though, we still had a bit of house building to do. Okay, so I wanted to see how we can make this even more unique. And I thought, what's the coolest thing? A floating lava case. So we've now got a floating lava case in the middle of our base. Don't know why, but why not? We then had our streak for day five, and I got five more rare candies. So this is why it's important to log in every day as you get these rewards, because if you break for one day, you lose your streak. So make sure you log in every day for seven days to get the best possible rewards. And now we have a level 70 Suicune because of that. I then started every single hunt possible. And these are the four hunts. But the one I was focused on is that male, calm, preamble, weak armor, crustle. That was our target. And luckily with my first teleport, I actually teleported into a Mesa biome. Which meant that we could find a crustle in here straight away. But I'm going to show you something in a minute, okay? We did end up finding a few crustles on the way, okay? A few male crustles, but unfortunately... They didn't have the correct ability or they might not have had the correct nature. But this cross of here, I knew it had weak armor. I knew it was a male. I caught it in the premium ball, but it had the wrong nature, which is fine. I didn't expect it to get it first time, okay? I then found another cross, which was the same level. Male. But no, still not the right ability. Now, I'm going to show you something, okay? I ended up finding loads of crustles, there's loads of females, there's loads of males and everything. But I spent maybe an hour running around the mesa, this is on 50,000 speed, and I could not find a crustle to save my life. I found loads of different Pokemon showing capture, like Gligar and stuff. But with the crustles I found, nothing. I maybe caught over 10, 15 crustles. I didn't have actually catching Goldengo, which is insane, which meant we didn't actually have to evolve Gimme Gold. And Goldengo is insane. Luckily, though, after finding the Goldengo, there was a crossover next to it. And this crossover actually had the right everything. And we got 32 large XP candies, which is insane. I gave all of these to Suicune. So Suicune was level 72. Now, 32 large XP candies. Put your guess in now. What level is it going to go to? Suicune went from level 72 all the way up. To level 85 and a bit more. Wow. I now wanted to enclose this space a bit more. We had spruce logs and I wanted to make this so that there were pillars coming down and we were blocking off so it's not so open. But because it was actually not symmetrical, this made it really difficult to actually build and each little bit was different. So I apologize if you guys are really OCD about it. But yeah, I also bought this Eevee and Gengar plushie. Eevee's gone here, and Gengar is on the other side. These plushies are amazing, and I just love how they look. Like, how have they made Gengar, 
looks so cute with his little tongue sticking out and everything. But these are our little signatures. We then even built this red sandstone and stuff. And I didn't know what I was doing this for. I was just using blocks that I hadn't really used to build before and went with the flow. And somehow I actually thought it looks pretty cool. We even built a birch roof. And I know some people are going to be annoyed because the roof isn't even symmetrical. But it's whatever. And this is our final base. We built the glowstones to attach it and everything. And I am super happy of how this looks, to be honest. For the next few days, an event happened. And in this event, what it was, was a fishing event. And I told you about this earlier. This is the event I took part in. So if you win the event, you get an event key and also one of the legendary lake trio. And you can see these events by joining the Discord, which is in the description. Now, while these events go on, there's a few things that take into account. But this was how busy the event was. Look how many people there are. And if you take part in these events, you will see so many Pokemon. You will see so many different people. And it's a great way to get the community together. In the first round, I only had a normal fishing. So the Pokemon I was pulling in weren't that great. But they were definitely new for me. So I hadn't found a tournament before, hadn't found a tentacle before. And I needed to capture them. This is because this is a new biome. And remember, biomes matter for what you find while fishing. And if you see that, a legendary actually spawned while the event was going on. A legendary tornadoes. That's insane. If you have this many people gathering one area, a legendary is bound to spawn. And I ended up not even making the top 10 in the first round. So I ended up doing a few trades and actually got myself the best possible fishing rod for the second round. And this meant that I'd find rarer Pokemon. And there's a few things to take into account while the event is going on. Now, the first thing is the rarity of the Pokemon. The rarer the Pokemon, the better points you get. The second thing is the IV stats. The higher the IVs, the better the Pokemon. And finally, luck, which we've had a ton of in this 100 days. But unfortunately, not enough for this event. But our luck will come later for events. I didn't make the top 10 in the second round, even with my really good fishing rod. But in the third round, I still didn't make the top 10. But the event was amazing. It was so well run and the rewards are incredible. And it is 100% worth giving these events a go. I spent so long trying to attack this tentacle in the third round that I actually had no chance of getting into the top 10 as well. The points were insane. And it goes off just one Pokemon. I end up using everything I got from those training bundles. So the irons, the proteins, everything that ups attack stats, defense stats, everything on a Pokemon. I use these as our stats need to be the best possible for this final battle with Diablo. But we only have 15 days left and we only have two Pokemon that level 100. We need to step it up. We need to complete hunts. We need to find loot in the wild. We need to go searching. I finally got a Tyranitar as well while the event was going on as I had a few XP candies. I ended up as many weirdos as possible. These things are level 60 now, okay? We needed to level our team. I'm getting a few more poker keys while finding a village and some of the rewards were okay, but they weren't what we wanted. We really needed some rare candies, something so that we could level our team up. You know, these rewards at this point, but the claim blocks and everything, they weren't worth anything to us in these last 100 days. We needed to get some rare candies. I ended up trading for quite a few and I got my Salamence all the way up to 68, but it's still not enough. We need to keep searching in the wild. I found this large XP candy, which I used, and also found a few more Pokeballs. But again, it's not what we need now. We just need to level our team, but it's super difficult. Luckily, I end up finding this desert temple though. And the desert temple had quite a few good things for me. It had a few XP candies and stuff. Even had a few diamonds in there for me. And also it had an enchanted apple. So if I did want to go take on something like the wither in the end, I can. I'm not going to, but I continued to complete my hunt. And there was an extreme hunt for a Claydol. And it made up for the Crustle. The first Claydol I find, bang, straight away completed the hunt. And this gave me... 45 medium XP candies, which is a lot worse than the 32 large. But I used all of these on Salamance. And that meant Salamance went up from level 70 all the way... Are you kidding me? Only level 77. 
Okay, we need to step it up now. We need to find something to get levels. But we had a contradiction. We were having to complete the Pokedex and not kill high level Pokemon. Like this Nidoqueen, we found a level 60 Nidoqueen. But we needed it for the Pokedex. We couldn't not capture this. We have to keep capturing Pokemon and remembering this. I was then able finally to claim my seven days streak reward. And for that, I got two Poke Crate Keys. Now, please, these crate keys need to be good. Ugh, not more claim blocks. We had no luck in them, but we ended up finding someone who would sell us rare candies. And with these rare candies, we were actually able to get Metagross all the way up to level 99, which meant he is close now to level 100, but still not there. We still needed him to level up to Ranata and Salamence. They all needed still quite a few levels. Luckily though, I end up trading more and I got them to level 100. But as you see, I have a Mega Bracelet, also a Metagross site. And this is because the owner actually gave me the Metagross site and the Mega Bracelet. As the Mega Bracelet is now a craftable item, but Metagross, his Mega's not even in the game. So we actually need to find a Mega Pokemon that's in the game that we can use against the owner. And I TP down into this random area and thought, you know what, there might be a nose passing down here. Something we've never seen before. Not a Diancy! Um, Diancy can Mega Evolve in this as well. Okay, our luck is turning around. Oh my god, it's almost killed me. Okay, our luck is turning around. We have just found a Diancy, another legendary Pokemon, and we got it in the first Quick Ball. We now need to find the Mega Stone for it. And luckily, there was a player called Maki. And Maki wanted to see me beat the owner. And he had just seen that I had caught Diancy. And he had that Dianceite there for me. So he ended up giving me the Dianceite. And we ended up mega evolving our Diancy. We end up putting the Mega Bracelet on, throwing Diancy out, and boom. We had Mega Diancy for the final battle. This is our chance. The owner is not going to know what hit him. We had one more vent for these 100 days, but before that, I actually ended up getting into a battle against one of the strongest players on the server, and he had a Maroid on, but luckily, I actually ended up beating him, and with the rare candies I got, I was actually able to get Dancy up to level 100 as well, so there's no issues there. But I just beat one of the strongest players on the server, so hopefully, the owner isn't as strong as them, and I might actually be able to beat him and if you guys have liked these 100 days make sure you subscribe as we are on day 99 at this point and we need all the support we can get and if you want to see more content like this let me know like look at all these cool pokemon they're throwing in and i'm gonna now switch some live commentary but not before i say that in this event if you win you get mega aerodactylite which is insane and there's the man we have to be Right, I'm going to switch some live commentary. Yeah, I'm going to pick red here. Come on. Please drop the green side. Let red be right, please. Yes! Yes! Come on, let's go. Come on, guys. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's go. Right, come on, green. Please. Please. Yes, again. Come on. Oh, my God. Right, I'm sick of green again. I'm sick of green. Okay. Oh, yes! They've dropped again! No way! Oh my god, we might have to win this Mega Aerodactylite if we get an Aerodactyl. No way! We should choose gone! Come on! We're going to get this Mega Aerodactyl. Oh, green, please. Come on. Please, you're up. Oh no, we got switched! Oh my god, it's just me. No, it's just me. No, oh my god, please. What's going on? Is it broke? What's going I don't know what's going on. Um, Please drop all the reds and I win. Please, come on, drop them. Please, drop them. Oh! No! Oh! No! Ah, oh, so annoying. Damn. Ah, oh, it's really annoying. Oh, come on, man. Wait. Burks just said bring him back. Bring me back? Yeah, go on, bring him back. Go on. Oh my god, I'm back! Wait, why? Why? Why am I here? I don't know. Come on, green. Please drop him. Yes! Oh, 
this. Oh my gosh. It's just me and Maldivin. Oh, Maldivin. Come on, we've got this, bro. Come on, stick together on it. Come on, that's an admin over. That's fine. Yes. Come on, let's go. Did we win? Come on. Come on, bro. Let's go. Did we win it? Oh, no, there's one more round. Damn, okay. Okay, come on. Green. We're sick in it. I'm sick in this. Come on, if he switches, he switches. But come on. Oh, come on. We need to win or lose together. Come on. Yes. No way. Have we just won this? Have we just won this? There's no way. Come on. They won. Yes. Come on. Give it to me. Come on, please. Where is it? Where is it? Yes! We got it! Let's go! We just won the event! No way! As you guys can tell that, I was very excited for that. We then did a running of the Tauros thing and I got obliterated by that Tauros. But that was insane. We just won an entire community event. Let's go! And now all that's left is to fight the owner. It's time. I almost feel like we've lived this once. Community is here. Me versus the owner. As the sun sets, can we win? I'm doing this for the community. Can we beat the owner of the entire server, Diablo Turtle? He has to fall. We must win for everyone here. Us as a community are stronger than the owner. Me and my team, my mega Diancy at the end. Come on. Let's do this. We can't win. Suicune, you're my start. We started off Suicune versus the Valley. And Suicune was actually able to get a lot of damage, but not on Silvalli. He ended up switching his Silvalli out to his Mega Steelix, and we did half his HP with Surf. I knew I had to go for Surf again, straight after it. And with Surf once again, his Steelix has fallen. We had beaten his Steelix, his Rillaboom took out Suicune, but his Mega has gone. I switched Nala out from Garganacle and I ended up meteor mashing it with Metagross and look at the damage. Metagross, the MVP, takes out Garganacle. Not only taking out Garganacle, he then also took out Silvalli and not only taking out Silvalli, he then Zen her butted the Toxtricity. Three gone, all from Metagross. What a fight from Metagross. I thought for sure his Rillaboom was going to take out Metagross. But no. It doesn't. He switches his Rillaboom into Cortana to take the Meteor Mash. I have no idea why he's done that. It's given us an opportunity to switch to Moridon. Moridon, Electro Drift, takes out the Cortana. He has one. I say one Pokemon left. That being Rillaboom. And ride on our first legendary. The new legendary from Scarlet and Violet takes out Rillaboom. And we have defeated the owner of the server. We are the champions. Diablo dethroned. The community has won. And that was 100 days on Cobblemon Island. Thank you everyone for watching. If you want to join the server, links are in the description for it. Shout out to Diablo for letting me play on his server. And we will be back for another 100 days. And can Diablo beat me? Or can I retain the title of champion of Cobblemon Islands?